Fantastic meeting you in terms of last year at Property Engine Accelerated and um, uh, some of the cool things that you're doing. The world has changed. The new normal is, is, uh, is here. So all those amazing sort of growth strategies and things we, we had in place, it's, it's, now, uh, it's now a regroup uh, very much so around it. So just thought it'd be really neat to, to chime in with you and get a sense of, well, okay, how, how are you going with this? What are the kind of things, strategies you're putting in place from a leader point of view, from a, a team point of view? Uh, are your team working remotely uh, already? Are they still coming to the office? How's that all, all working? And, you know, for our New Zealand friends, our New Zealand friends, they're in lockdown. Like, they're yeah. just like, okay, I'm at home, other than shopping, uh, a medical issue and, and, and so on. Yeah. 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 Definitely interesting times, isn't it? I mean, absolutely. I think I've seen more innovation. What's that, uh, what's that wheel behind you, by the way? Oh, that's our wheel spin for our team. Let me show oh, you. Ooh la la! I'm liking the wheel spin already. Okay, I, I, can you talk? Because it won't. It, it, if if you talk, it'll come to you. If I talk, it'll come to me. What do you mean? Yeah, like I'm seeing your 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 screen now. So I'm going to stop talking. Can you talk about the wheel, please? Yeah, sure. So um, this is our wheel spin. This is just a little uh, cultural thing we do. Every month we pick two team members who've upheld our values and delivered a great experience for our clients. They get to spin the wheel and then they get whatever prize they land on. I think this is a hot favourite. Ah, a full day off. Ooh la la. That's yeah. very, very cool. So, so um, the, the spinning of the wheel now is happening virtually. So everyone's, everyone's coming in via Zoom or using yes. Zoom. Or, I'm, yep. I'm, I'm the wheel spinner, so I've definitely rigged it. <laughs> uh, no, so that's, yeah, we've been remote now since the 23rd of March. Right. Uh, yep. So we made the call um, somewhat early to, to get people out of the office. I mean, given we've got 50-odd people in the office, we just didn't want to carry the risk for them. Um, and we made that decision probably about a week before we actually went uh, remote. So we had this massive week of innovation, operational change processes, um, yeah, pretty much getting everything communicating to our clients and then uh, having everyone offside a week later, which went surprisingly smoothly. Yeah, great. Look, I, I like the way that you've, uh, you've talked about remote. I mean, I've had some leaders say, oh, the team are working from home and I sort of correct them and go, Oh, can we just change that to working remotely? Because there's a difference, there's a difference in terms of headspace around how someone's working and, and operating from that point of view. Yeah, absolutely agree. I think, I think um, as well, like working from home, getting used to working from home, there's a whole lot around that, you know, mentally getting into the right headspace and preparing and, you know, for us, we've, we've never had a structure where the team predominantly did work from home. So just easing into that period and, and getting everyone remote was a big shift, I think, mentally. So I think, I think um, the process is around, you know, what can you do every day to make that transition as smooth as possible? So even though you might be at home, you've still got a really structured work day. And that seems to have gone well for the most part for us. Yeah, yeah, great. So I, I did a Facebook Live about a week ago and I talked about um, re-routine. So, so the routines that you once had, and if someone changes something, typically they just change a little bit of their routine. So most days are saying, well, we'll just put this other little bit in. Where it's now it's like, okay, we're just taking the carpet away. Let's look at a re-routine and what that actually looks like. Yeah, so, I like that. Yeah, so, so could you maybe just share a little bit about how you've done that with, uh, with your team and what are you seeing working? Uh, well, what have you maybe tried that you've gone, okay, that didn't work, let's take that off the agenda because that's okay to do too in these circumstances. Yeah. It's, not every, it's not everything you do is going to work. It's, it's going to be being able to read the play and go, okay, we'll take that one off yeah. um, along those lines. Yeah, so I think in the early stages, the main focus for the team, um, obviously the operational stuff was, was relatively easy to implement. It was just a matter of training and, and updating procedures. Um, so the real focus early days was to, yeah, re-routine the team. So some advice to them were things around like get changed out of your pyjamas, 
uh, move away from like the couch space, have a separate workspace and, and then just sort of common sense things that you don't necessarily really think about when you're having a crazy day, like have your breaks, drink lots of water, eat healthy and just trying to build that into everyone's day. So on Thursday Arbo, for example, we have a stretching, a team stretching session via Zoom just to encourage people to get up and, and move away from their computers and people are going on walks on their lunch break, which when they're in the office, they don't do. So there's actually been some real health benefits, I think, that are coming out of, out of it at an early stage. Yeah, that's great. Some resetting. Um, uh, one of our, our clients did a, uh, a competition where it was take a pic of your workspace and then it was, uh, it was voted actually who had the best workspace set up at home kind of thing. Yeah, I love that. So, so I think it's that, that level of creativity kicking in to say, well, okay, how do we do this a little bit differently? Yeah. Um, still feeling uh, culturally aligned um, because I know, you know, one of your, your real strengths that you talked about with, with the, the leaders at uh, Property Management Accelerator was that, that whole cultural piece as to how we bring people together. That's harder to do remotely, isn't it? It sure is. I mean, I think for us, in a way, that's about routine as well. So having the right systems and touch points in place to ensure that everyone's getting covered and everyone's getting supported. So for us, that looks like um, weekly meetings with different teams within the team, uh, team leaders checking in with each staff member. I send a morning email each day with any sort of breaking news from the evening before and usually a fun, funny meme. Um, and then every afternoon, I'm sending an email to the team asking them to share with me their peak, their pit and their score for the day out of 10. And that's been really valuable because it's an opportunity peak. for me. So that's peak, pit and score for the day. Yeah. So highlight, yeah, low point and how they're feeling in general. Yeah, great. Excellent. Yeah. Very good. That's been, that's been good because, I mean, every day I don't necessarily have a reason to call all 50 team members. But that quick check-in is a really good way to sort of gauge the temperature and check in with anyone who's potentially had a challenging day or celebrate any wins that someone might have had. Yeah, 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 very good, very good. Uh, and what, so what tech are you using for your communication? Um, uh, are you using WhatsApp? We're using uh, predominantly Zoom for our meetings. Zoom, Teams, yeah. Teams as a backup, Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams, great. Um, and for beyond that, we've got a private, so like Facebook group where the team can sort of have less formal chatter and then they've got their own groups within their own team. So the PM team have a chat on, I think, Messenger, um, the field services team have their own chat and that way we're, we're not just having too much traffic in the same place for everyone. Yeah, great. So if you were going to do the, um, the, the best desk or um, the, uh, the best fitness uh, pose for the week. Yeah. You, you do that on the Facebook close, close group? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So um, we have weekly uh, not so employee of the week, which is your pet or your baby or your kids and, and how they're helping you do your job that week. Um, oh, cool. yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so, so, um, I'm not sure how much has sort of hit Canberra in terms of the, um, the 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 rent relief kind of process could you maybe just talk a little bit about has has that hit um and and what sort of things have you put in place there yeah sure so we've got the six month um no evictions i think that's national i believe yeah. uh, so we're in that same boat um we are working closely with tenants when they come to us uh we've prepared like a hardship template for them which outlines sort of some key information to be able to better understand what they're requiring and take that to a client, so case by case. Um, beyond that, I think um, we're predominantly, a lot of businesses in Canberra are working remotely um, where they can. So that's pretty standard for our industry right now in Canberra. Yeah. Um, but it's been really well received by clients, you know, like credit to the clients for embracing sort of the innovation and the changing of processes. So, uh, you know, ones that come to mind would be, for example, doing routine inspections via Zoom that's quite a big shift into what we used to do. Um, but that's been generally well received and, and it's, we're getting good outcomes for our clients by doing that. So, so you're sending a client a Zoom link on their phone? Yep. Uh, they're, they're launching Zoom. They're walking around the property. They're letting you know certain, certain things that need either fixing or addressing or, uh, hey, this, is, this was like this when we moved in, da 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 da, da. Yep. And then is your, are your teams taking, taking pics at certain points using the... the uh, Zoom interface? 
So we're actually doing two parts to it. We're, we're testing and rolling out the Zoom component that you just explained this week and, and ahead right. of that appointment, we've actually prepared a checklist of how we would like the client to walk through the property. So entering a room left to right, ceiling and floor. So there's that consistency in their approach. Um, but in addition to that, we're also sending them their last inspection report if there is one and asking them to replicate those same photos in that report so we can see directly and compare. Yeah, yeah very by, good. By yeah. having that double element is just sort of mitigating any sort of gaps that might otherwise exist. Yeah, great. Now, a little innovation that, that has, you've sparked me with uh, would be sending them a video of what a good routine inspection looks like on a Zoom. Great idea. That's an awesome so, idea. Uh, so rather than you know them going left to right, so okay, how does that work? Yeah. Uh, which is my left, which is my right. Oh, okay, that's how, how it works. Um, yeah, I like so, that. I'm writing that down. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So, um, and, and are you doing much video as such to landlords and tenants? In terms of updates? Yeah, in terms of, of updates. and I'll call them market updates, but they're really health, safety, economic sort of updates. Yeah. So we've, um, we're doing uh, written content about two to three weeks apart and in terms of the content to our tenants and our owners. And in between yeah. that, if there's any major updates, we're adding video in between as well. Um, right. I'm, I'm really conscious of the importance of consistent and clear communication, but I'm also conscious of the fact that there's a lot of information overload right now. So we don't want to communicate just for the sake of it. We actually want to be able to add value when we do communicate. This is a really important point. I've uh, chatted uh, this morning, actually, with the, the uh, property management teams within RER Network, and we talked about being informed but not overwhelmed. So, yeah. firstly, for us individually, we need to be in that mode. And secondly, taking that on board with clients, uh, is, this, is this to inform them or is this going to overwhelm them? Mm. And, and, and where do we need to go with that from a, a piece by piece? Yeah, yeah I couldn't so, agree more. So have you had much of the portfolio requesting um, uh, uh, rent relief and so on? Look, not a huge amount at this stage. I think in part of that, it, um, it probably helps that we are in Canberra and we are predominantly a public service town. So there is a lot of um, more stable employment in Canberra. But in saying that, that doesn't discount the requests we have had. And obviously, a number of our tenants and our landlords actually are going through hardship. So I think, um, you know, we've got over 50 claims in already. Um, and we're working through those case by case. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and look, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go into specifically because you're right, it is case by case. So it's hard to, to say, well, okay, what's the standard with that? Because at the moment, there's no standard. The only thing that we're doing with our clients is um, put something in place for a month yeah. because we don't know what's coming, you know, in a week's time and, or two weeks' time as to from a new government kind of standard or policy or, or something along those lines. Yeah, I think that's good advice. Um, some of our landlords have come to us before the tenants even reached out in a couple of instances and said, look, I'm, I'm in the position where I can waive the rent for two months or three months and I don't expect that to be paid back. So obviously that's not the norm, but, you know, it's quite um, really lovely to see when that does happen. For the yeah. most part, um, different owners want different requirements around the length that they can assist or the way in that they, exist, they can assist. I think the difficulty is without having clarity from a lot of insurers. We really want to do the right thing by our clients and we're sort of running a little bit blind right now. So yeah. in our view, our advice to um, owners who have been, whose tenants have been impacted is that we look at a payment plan, uh, which will result the tenant going into arrears, which hopefully means insurance can be triggered at a later date if need be. Um, but obviously um, until we have that certainty, it's just speculation. Yeah, yeah. Look, I think it was, it was interesting when um, uh, Scott Morrison announced from an Australian point of view that uh, no evictions for six months, some people actually heard, I don't pay my rent for six months. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, no, you are liable for your rent for this particular time frame. This means that, that if you do come under some hardship, you'll still be liable at the end. You're Correct. just not going to get, you know, get asked to leave or, or kicked out, so to speak. Yeah. So, I, think, I think what was... Um what's really um, important as part of this time that we're going through is that as property managers, this is like, this is our time to shine. Our capacity to empathise and negotiate and facilitate these conversations now more than ever, we're really able to prove the value that we can bring to these relationships while people are experiencing hardship. Yeah. So not time to put your head in the sand, um, uh, time to, to do that. Do you have an escalation strategy that you've set up with the, 
if something like that happens because there's there's a PM as usual where you know it's 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 cruising along and doing doing what it's supposed to do from a landlord and a tenant point of view and you know maybe a maintenance issue that is um, is within the realm of traditional property management yeah and then you've got this kind of spike um, in there have you got like an escalation process in place in terms of managing managing the team's workload or if they've got a case that they can't resolve yeah yeah so 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 the uh, uh, so normally, if I'm in the office, okay, um, I've naturally got a bounce factor with the person beside me and say, oh, hey, I've just got someone that a little lower. I'm now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll use the word isolation or not, but, you know, I've got a level of isolation around me. I don't have a left or a right or across the, uh, the petition sort of um, bounce factor or down the hall kind of thing. Yeah. But have you got a way of the guys managing that through? Yeah, absolutely. So we pretty much buddied up all our staff. And just before we went into remote work, we actually had five new starters join us. So we've got wow. five very fresh, um, new to the industry people. Um, so that adds an extra ah. element of challenge. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone's buddied up. We've got our senior property managers taking on some more responsibility, supporting our more junior staff members who are still learning. Uh, they're doing weekly meetings. They're also work, spending a lot of time just working on Zoom together. So it's like you do have someone sitting next to you. Um, so they're working away and then when they have a question, they can just go, oh, by the way, what do I do about this? And screen share is a godsend for that. So you can jump on and we can, we can help one another work through particular circumstances. Yeah, yeah, great. So um, someone's not feeling like I'm stuck with this and I've got nothing to do. Plus with that uh, end of day sort of email coming through, the only slight difference that, that, that we've been coaching with our team is uh, not an email as such, but a WhatsApp kind of feed. So everyone gets to see what's occurring. Now with 50 people, that might be too many. So it might be like chunking it up into, into some. Um, but what we found with that is you've got this, this really neat kind of well done on that. Hey, that's really cool. I can help you with this and, uh, and so on. So yeah. um, um, uh, that's great. Uh, look, any other points? I know you, you've got uh, a lot on today, so so it's awesome to, to have been able to chime in and, and share these kind of strategies. Yeah, no, I really appreciate I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. I think, as I said, I've got great idea from you. I've noted that down. But I think, I think if anything, uh, now more than ever, it's just really important that we remember to pick up the phone, uh, not only for our teams and not only for our, you know, our people, but also our clients, because I think... A negotiation when a tenant is in hardship can't be done over email. We need to be talking to people. We need to empathise. And I just think the more we can build those relationships right now, they're going to absolutely change the way that, as an industry, we're perceived. I think if we get this right, we can add a lot of value for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. So, um, you know, I'll often say that an email should back up a phone conversation. So, um, you know, as we discussed on the phone, boom, as opposed to there's a there's a bit of that hiding behind the email and therefore it typically lands and most people read emails harder than what they were written in the intent mm -hmm. they're written so yeah. therefore you can create some emotional energy i talked about this last week with the the property management uh, team and that is when emotions are high logic invariably becomes low and we could be dealing with some people who've got some emotional charge to them uh, and the last thing we want to do is to is to fire off an email as opposed to let's get on the phone uh, and hey it, it's it's terrible you're in this particular situation uh, I'm happy to work with you to, to look at what we can how we can actually resolve this. Mm. Um, do you remember ANSET? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm just checking. Just checking. <laughs> um, so there'll be some people who are tuning into this that go ANSET. ANSET. What's the ANSET? Um, like, there's an ANSET drive in Sydney. Has that got something to do with it? <laughs> So, you know, ANSET uh, once upon a time was an airline that uh, existed in Australia. And in their service training, um, uh, they were not able to say no. They weren't allowed to say no. So when a request came in, it was certainly let me have a look for that for you. So you'd walk up to their equivalent of Qantas Club, the, the business lounge, and say, hello, can I have an upgrade? <laughs> they weren't allowed to say there is no chance you're ever <laughs> going to get an upgrade. They'd say, certainly let me have a look at that for you. So it's just that initial approach. And they say, oh, look, unfortunately the flight's full, but look, enjoy your flight and enjoy the lounge. And uh, thanks for actually coming up and doing it. And it's interesting when you start to look at that initial approach, it can take a lot of heat out or add a lot of heat. You know, computer says no, 
<laughs> kind of way. Um, and and it's, it's neat that you have been working with the team on that particular journey for them to be in that kind of really cool responsive mode. Yeah, and look, it is a challenge. It takes them longer. It's it's emotionally draining. But if we don't get that right, we're not going to get the right outcomes for our tenants or our owners. So they understand just how important it is. Yeah, yeah, and you know, great that you're there to support them. The other the other team leaders are there supporting them in the in the journey that they're on. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and look, there's no question. This is, you know, some people have actually said to me, um, Michael, I don't think I've got the leadership skills. I said, look, you're going to get the leadership skills. Your your leadership's going to come out at the end of this. You're going to be a stronger leader, more effective leader than you were going into this. So yeah. uh, embrace that. Um, and I guess on that, it's like, well, what are you doing from a leadership point of view? It's like, okay, uh, learning this, let me listen to some TED Talks, let me tune in and uh, learn these particular things that I might have been procrastinating and putting off for a while. I now need to, to be able to put these into, into energy. That's great advice. And I think as well, because we don't necessarily know how long we're going to be working in these sort of uh, circumstances, I think as a leader, it's essential that our, uh, our leadership style is consistent rather than um, intense, so consistency over intensity, because we can't maintain a really sort of pump up, hustle, go, go, go mentality if we're doing this sort of six months later. So I think just finding what works for you as a leader and being consistent in delivering that is really essential, particularly when we don't have an end date. Yeah, I think this is a really important point. Um, I, the, the, the mode that we need to be in is, hey, we're in this for, for the long game. What is neat about this is I think if you were to say to your team, guys, in a week's time, we're working remotely, the level of resistance that would have been in that without this is external pressure to be able to make that happen, it would have been, you know, in six months time, people would have still been telling, Hannah, yeah. I told you it wasn't, that wasn't gonna work. You know, I told you it was gonna be problems with it. Whereas everyone's in this together, we're, 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 how do we actually make this work? What do we need to do to navigate? And the third, yeah. the, the, the conversation I'm having with, with clients at the moment is, navigate firstly and the, and on the other side of this there's going to be things to capitalize on but let's not worry about capitalizing right now let's focus on navigating learning some new ways of doing things so we can be in a position to capitalize up down the track yeah absolutely and like none of us know all the answers i mean i'm sure we'll make mistakes we'll realize we can do things better uh, we'll find ways to do things better and that's not just from our team but that's feedback from our clients as well so i think being open to hearing that feedback will enable the way that we do navigate and we do continue to sort of evolve. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And look, the, one of the things that we're talking a lot is let's test this for the next week or let's test this for the next two weeks and see if it works. Hmm. And most people can take on board, oh, I can, I can do a test for a week or two. Uh, let's test this for the next month. But if you turn around and say for the rest of your entire existence, this is in place, there's just more natural resistance in that process. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, Hannah, fantastic. Uh, wish you well, uh, uh, safe, uh, healthy uh, and economic navigation through the, uh, the twists and turns that we know we're going to have in the Australian marketplace. Hey, thanks, thanks so much for your contribution. Um, massively appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Stay safe and uh, look forward to seeing how you guys continue to innovate. Thanks, Hannah. Talk appreciate soon. it. Catch ya. <laughs>